Indian manuscripts has a very long tradition and history in Indian art. Firstly manuscripts were done in cut pieces of barks. Later they were on gold or silver plates. In later period manuscript paintings were being practiced. Manuscripts are the documents written by hand before the printing process was evolved. Manuscript paintings were the graphical representation of the written documents. There were many types of manuscripts in India, among them, the Sachi Potter Puthi manuscripts of Assam is one of them. Manuscript writing is a very old tradition in Assam. It is said that, it had started from the 7th century from the period of the Kamrupa king Bhaskar Verma. These manuscripts were later developed with paintings in the 16th century in Majuli, of Assam, in response to the religious movement of neo vaishnavism under Mahapurush Ramanto Shankar Dev, a mystic of Assam. The language used in the manuscripts is Brozavali. It was a literary language used by Shankar Dev. It was based on Maithili, to which Assamese and a sprinkling of Western Hindi was added. The paintings of this region is saturated with some special characteristics of the indigenous folk, Satriya as well as Mughal, Rajput, Pala, and Southeast Asian trade. These paintings were done on the bark of Sachi or aloe tree. In these paintings the illustrations are rich in color and detailed in expression, these are done by kanikars on the walls, ceiling, pillars of the Satras or monasteries of Assam. The costumes of the characters in the manuscripts were influenced by the Satriya culture. The colors used in these paintings were made from earth colors such as Hangul, Hytel, Chandun, Dhail Madi, etc. In these paintings all combinations of colors were used, among them yellow and green are prominent. These illustrated stories are from the Bhagavat Purana and other epics. According to Indian Vedic scriptures the reflection of the Absolute One is a feminine form or Mulprakirti. After that the Purusha and Prakriti were formed to begin the life cycle. Both men and women have their equal status in the society, but some humans have the misconception that the male progeny has the higher place in the society. Both genders should be in equal count in order to maintain the natural balance. If one of them decreases then the humanity may come to an end. Manuscripts depicts many moralistic stories of mythology in support of the feminine gender. Once there was a king who has no child, and he was very upset as he was growing old, and there is no one to sit on his throne after him. But after two years his luck came to him, 
the queen gave birth to a child, but that was a girl. Thinking that a girl can't rule a kingdom, the king ordered to kill the baby. After a year the queen gave birth to another child, but that was to a girl, the king's order was the same that is to kill the infant. Years passed but the queen didn't give birth to any child again. So one day the king decided to adopt a child, and so he gave a message to the peoples of his kingdom, that one who will give a healthy male infant baby to the king, he will give his half of his kingdom to that family. Now the peoples were in greed for the half kingdom, and started female infanticide to get a male baby. In the kingdom only a few couples got male infants, but they were not healthy. The king rejected those seeing their condition. Years passed, the king grew much older and was falling sick. Even in the kingdom the female count was very few in count of males. Later there was no childbirth in the kingdom. And after years the whole kingdom was left, only with stoned graves. Such stories gives a moral of respecting the mother nature or the feminine form, from where the creation started. In the two great epics of India, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata, the feminine characters plays a vital role in both. It reflects the inner rage and wisdom of a feminine form in both. In modern times artists continues the old tradition of making manuscript paintings through modern methods. Numerous manuscripts are still in the Sotras of Assam, and have been on the brink of getting lost. Unless these are collected and preserved for research and study, a treasure trove of Assamese, as well as Indian culture will lost forever.